skipping systems considering various failure modes. He has developed iterative response spectrum for nonlinear systems. He has more than 500 publications, including journals, reports, and conference proceedings to his credit. In the human resource development front, he has guided 10 PhD students and 45 MTech students from HBNI, University of Mumbai, and IIT Bombay. He has published a textbook on seismic design, structures, piping systems, and components, Springer International 2019, with co-authors Hari Prasad, A.K. Varma, and co-authored of chapter each in three books. As a president of Association of Structural Rehabilitation, uh, he has uh, guided members and developed guidelines. He has collaborated in about 32 research projects, bulk of them related to structural dynamics with NITK, IITs, IASC, CSIR funded by Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences, De Department of Atomic Energy, he has also collaborated in research projects with institutions from Germany, USA, France, and UK related to fire safety of structures, seismic hazards, and performance-based design of structures and piping systems. Uh, it is uh, really an immense pleasure for me to welcome this, uh, such a distinguished uh, person to lecture for our uh, FTP. Uh, Professor Jia Reddy. Uh, yeah. Kindly, uh, I'm handing over to you. Please take the session. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Radhika Nair, uh, for introducing me. Uh, let me say thanks to you for inviting uh, to give a lecture on response control of structures subject to dynamic loads. And also thanks to the, all the organizers of the LBS College of Engineering, Kasaragu. Kerala. Uh, you know, this particular FDP on advances in earthquake engineering, uh, it is a, a, you know, very interesting topic and more, many places, uh, you know, workshops or the development programs, faculty development programs are being held. So uh, for me also, because uh, recently or even last, uh, uh, since because of this uh, COVID-19 issues, uh, we have a lot of uh, invitations for uh, you know online uh, lectures uh, maybe uh, those people uh, heard uh, some of the things uh, those attended some of the workshops where i presented uh, some of the things may be repetition so you can bear with me and uh, maybe if, even if you hear second time you may get more clarity so that is one of the uh, things you should keep in mind and uh, coming to the other part is that you know this particular workshop we have a uh, speakers uh, uh, from uh, Structural Engineering Research Center, Chennai. One is uh, Dr. Satish Kumar and uh, another is Dr. Srikala. Uh, Dr. Satish Kumar is going to talk on the you know experimental methods and as well as the control techniques. And uh, Srikala uh, is going to talk about the base isolation. So uh, it looks uh, they are also going to have the similar kind of uh, discussions uh, because my topic and their topic is going to be more or less same. But uh, in order to make uh, some kind of difference, and uh, I thought, uh, let me have a, some kind of different way of presentations, different way of uh, giving the yeah, information material for the participants. I already shared my uh, you know, uh, presentations to uh, uh, Radhika Nair. Uh, I am sure that you all are going to get those uh, material, that material, what I'm going to discuss. So what I am going to talk is about three parts, uh, part one, part two, part three. And part one is an uh, you know, introduction to the structural dynamics. And uh, you know, when you talk about response control uh, of structures subject to dynamic loads, definitely you should have an introduction to structural dynamics. That's why I thought the first part, let us have the introduction. Second part is on the, say, performance-based design. Because if you want to see, uh, uh, there is always, uh, I could not see any presentations or any, uh, you know, what is that called, papers, to say that if you want to have a better control systems, particularly say passive control systems in the structures to control the dynamic responses. You know, the performance uh, uh, you know, of the structure is very important. Uh, suppose you just design for the conventional methods and uh, you say that you put the dampers and absorbers on the structures and say that I could control the responses. Uh, you know, it's not enough because these uh, you know, control systems, particularly the dampers and the, say isolators, even in the case of absorbers, you have to connect to the structure somewhere. 
So the connectivity all depends upon the what performance level you are targeting on the structure. Now today we don't have a methodology, well established methodology, even 1893 still they are struggling or maybe trying their best to develop a code 1893 part related to the performance based design. So performance based design and uh, ensuring certain performances uh, you know, of the structure when you couple it uh, with the dampers or when you don't couple it with the dampers is very, very essential because the connections, particularly embedded parts between the damper or the absorbers or isolators with the structure, you have to ensure the connectivity. If you don't ensure the connectivity for the design basis dynamic loads, then the purpose of this particular control devices is lost. So this is the very key, very important aspects which is generally not going to not discussed by many people. So if whoever is going to give lecture on the control system, they straightway say that this is a response because of uh, without dampers or without absorbers, without, without isolators. And this is a response with respect to the <laughs> dampers, isolators, and even absorbers. Assuming that the structure is elastic or linear. But under, say, dynamic loads, generally the dynamic loads are accidental loads that may happen uh, during the life of the structure or may not happen. Therefore, you allow certain amount of uh, plastic deformation or inelastic deformation of the structure. Under that state of conditions of the structure, you have to ensure the connectivity between the, say, dampers, isolators, and the, say, absorbers. Then only the purpose of the these devices, this methodology is going to work. So that is a uh, point I want to focus uh, today on the second part of my lecture. And third part yeah, is, again, uh, uh, many people talk about the, say, dampers and all with the time history analysis you know, because uh, when you put the dampers absorbers system becomes a little bit linear non-linear therefore time history analysis are preferred but you know most of you have the design basis as a response spectrum for example 1893 if you take so you have a design basis response uh, uh, spectra that you have to use and ensure the safety of the structures therefore a methodology based on the response spectrum as input uh, is also essential even if you connect with the you know, structure the dampers, isolators, and the, say, for example, absorbers. So I will also focus on that particular methodology and its validation with the experimental data. So this is overall, you know, what I'm going to talk in this uh, two hours presentations. So let us see structures. Uh, you have various uh, type of structures, starting from your own residential uh, buildings. Then you have the hospitals, you have the lifelines like bridges and roads, etc theaters, schools, and office buildings also, temples, mosques, you know, masjid, etc., etc. So these are the certain uh, class of uh, structures uh, generally you come across. And safety of all these things, the safety levels are, if you see the performance levels, uh, levels of these structures, what you ensure, you have to ensure is different uh, uh, compared to each other. So for example, lifelines, you have to say that it should be the, I think those are having that some idea of the performance based design, we can say it should be in operational condition during op earthquake and after earthquake. Therefore, the performance levels required for, say, for example, say hospitals is different from the residence buildings. So residence buildings, you just say, you have to save the life, but you have to just prevent the collapse of the structure. So your performance levels for the buildings or residence are quite different. Similar lifelines, they also should be operational because if you want to evacuate, you want to manage the disaster, these, those should be available. So depends upon the functional requirement and uh, the performance are different for each structure. And uh, say, for example, you have a schools or theaters, you have a large number of people, and these all structures are going to subject to the normal loads as well as say earthquake loads or say cyclonic winds and so on and so forth. So we want to just see what are the classification of loads the structure is going to see whatever the loads you are going to consider in the design are the normal loads as usual the dead weights live loads imposed loads thermal loads and so on the accidental loads as i mentioned the blast loads could be man-made blast the extreme winds natural load earthquake loads natural load fire loads again the natural load and in a uh, fire load is maybe the man-made uh, loads but all these things um, you, you, are, you know, there are many accident loads possible. I think uh, in uh, recent, I think yesterday or day for yesterday, Himachal Pradesh, you have the landslides. The landslide created, you know, a lot of uh, stones rolled down from the hill. And one stone, you know, was uh, falling, traveled for long distance and fell onto the 
uh, you know, bridge crossing the say river simply collapsed, just one stone. So what I want to say, that kind of accidental situations are very common, and those uh, frequency of those accidental loads, including the earthquakes and uh, extreme winds, are very, very, uh, what I am say, low probability. That is, it may happen or it may not, may not happen during the total life of the structure. Therefore, your consideration, your say, uh, design limits, the performance limits, you take a different way than whatever you require to see in the under the normal loads. I hope that, that part you should get very, you have to catch very well. So on the right side, you have a lot of examples. So you have a cyclonic winds possible and wind loads on the say bridges. And there's one of the classical example is the Tokama Bridge, which just collapsed within three uh, you know months after started using it. Then you have blast recently, some blasts uh, take place in the other part of the world. So you can see such kind of things is not that uh, the very close to the blast uh, in our tree, you have the severe loads. When you go to the even away from that, many structures are going to see the lot of vibration loads and you have to ensure that the safety of them. But the frequency of such loads are very small. So uh, so this, uh, now we'll, we are going to focus on the dynamic loads because the topic is on the response control of structures subject to the dynamic loads. The various, uh, you know, structure, you know, uh, dynamic problems are structural dynamics, as I said, the structure subject to the earthquake loads, wind loads, even blast loads, even say internal explosions and so on and so forth. So the response of the structure in terms of the, say, uh, displacement, velocities, acceleration, force movements, which are varying with the time, we say that that part of the total subject to we say structural dynamics. When you talk about the mission dynamics, why I'm mentioning these things are that when you want to design a structure under structural dynamic, under dynamic loads, it's not that you have to only look at the structure in isolation, whatever things I mentioned in the previous slide, you have to consider the design. Not, to, not only that, but also you have to talk about because of uh, the structure is going to support many things, right? Not only human uh, beings, but also machines, if you talk about the industrial structures. Even your house also going to support a lot of machines, for example, washing machines. And some people also have the uh, gym uh, it, uh, you know, equipment. So you have some kind of active equipment are in the building. So those have certain kind of dynamic loads going to be generated. When you have the old machine, washing machine, or the new washing machine, you can see that I hope all of you must have felt the vibrations load transfer into the structure. So that part of the loads generated, we talk about the machine dynamics characters. If you have a good, uh, say, washing machine, then you have a good isolation. You don't get much uh, loads coming out of the structure. But if you have a, a mission which doesn't have the good isolation and so on and so forth, you see that your floats keep on vibrating. Now coming to human body dynamics, so it's, uh, it's not that we are going to talk about all these things, mission dynamics and human body dynamics. But what I want to tell you that when you want to design a structure for dynamic loads, you have to also keep uh, the things which are in the structure. Say if you talk about the industrial structures, you have equipment. Equipment also have the dynamic characteristics. Is also have the vibration problems. And finally, the loads are going to be transmitted to the say structure. And also, even say for example, under earthquake load, it's say it is a common excitation for the whole systems, including the the so building equipment piping supported on it. Even say if we talk about the residential building, or say you know say office buildings, you have water supply system, fire water system. They are all going to get subject to the some kind of dynamic loads finally is going to transfer the load from its own behavior to the structure vice versa structure also will transfer the loads to the say is the services like water uh, pipe uh, water systems as well as even say cabling systems and so on and so forth so the interaction of all these things you cannot neglect when you want to design the structure you want to ensure the safety of the structure and also safety of the people and also the it want to have that uh, uh, in mind that economics you know loss of economy should also not be there so human body dynamics if you talk very specifically i just given one example here the father carrying a child so if the father walks very slowly then child you know is uh anyway starts vibrating right going up and down and he wanted to play on his uh, uh, you know father's shoulder he also can generate extra load so it is like you know the child wanted to play with his father's uh, 
you know shoulder then you can jump uh, even if the father is walking very slowly even say strike for example structure is very stand still yes he's ready to take all the loads coming from the equipment piping system similar to that if the you know child is coolly sitting then no problem but as soon as the child start you know behaving you know on its own plane plane then in the load transfer after some time you see that parents a father will feel that what you are doing i'm a little bit uncomfortable so there is interaction between the child and child behavior onto the behavior of the say human being so we can say simulate this particular aspects how the you know vibration or the loads going to transfer it onto the body even say i think those people are working in the space uh, industry uh, you know they have to get uh, exposed to the all vibrations before say for example they are going to the space so you have different kind of vibrations and your body you know every uh, part of your body has certain natural frequencies its own behavior even for the say uh, you know you want to hearing capabilities or in a load bearing capabilities your heart to behavior everything will be different with a certain kind of then you're going on to the stretch so that part we talk about human body dynamics which we are not dealing much but what i am saying this is simulation so human body dynamics and the structure dynamics they are closely related to each other when you say the non living things like equipment piping systems or structure you know uh, support on structures so this whole part we talk about uh, uh, you know structural dynamics or dynamic problems now what are the loads coming onto this now let's go slowly to the structures so the what are the loads uh, coming onto the vibration loads or dynamic loads coming onto structures are could be the natural vibrations or man made vibrations now natural vibrations when you talk uh, say you know is a wind induced loads you can see that you have a tall chimneys with the regular geometry you have vertex oscillations going to be there so you have the vibration load on the structure so if you say for example flights which also a structure right so when they have turbulences you have a lot of dynamic loads coming even if you hold a chair, umbrella under the uh, gusts then you can see that your hand is subjected to a lot of dynamic loads so these all come under the natural vibrations i hope let me see if you have some kind of earthquake excitation you can see the structure start vibrating like this anyway this is a small vibration a structure uh, on a 100 ton sheet cable of the country and it is on the base isolator you have some kind of vibrations so this is all natural vibration because earthquake is a natural vibration wind is a natural vibration so this uh, whatever the uh, uh, loads caused due to the nature we call the natural vibration and then you talk man made vibration so now let's say pump when the spine is supported on the structure floor then pump has certain amount of uh, you know unbalanced forces unbalanced masses causing the forces so you have the forces transmitted from the pump to the structure and say for example the pipe whatever you are seeing there if a pipe has a high pressure liquid passing through that suddenly there is a failure then you have the certain kind of uh, shock loads going to be coming out of the structure now in the downside you have a building with say human beings if you they they are practicing uh, dances or they even say gyms and all you can see that you know structure is subject to a certain kind of dynamic loads and a classical example is that when the you know army people are marching onto the say bridge they say that the natural frequency of the you know uh, uh, steps whatever the uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, you know uh, military people putting onto the structure should not co coincide the natural frequency of the structure otherwise you have resonances there is a possibility that some kind of damage onto the bridge structure so that is a classical example is generally not going to happen like that because the inertia of the whatever the man people making you have a lot of vibrations possible depends upon the what kind of uh, the, you know this bridge is if it is a suspension bridge is a different if you have a say concrete or steel is a different thing so but is a example that when you have the your activity how you are acting you are skipping or you're dancing or you're walking they have it has a certain frequency therefore that frequency should not coincide with the structural frequencies so what i want to say that the structure is always subject to the dynamic loads whether it is a residential house is a office building school or whatever the structure you take or the bridge always is going to subject it to the dynamic loads but in the residential building you don't have you have continuous even the people keep on walking right so you are say mother or your wife keep on walking onto the floor to the kitchen and back to the other rooms etc so you have certain kind of dynamic loads if large people are there always the structure is subject to the dynamic loads but it's very small enough that whatever the stress is going to generate is very small so you don't bother much about it but certain cases yes you have to bother now coming to the bridges you know in the vehicle induced vibrations not only the vehicle own characters because 
uh, you have the different kinds of Volvo bus or the ST buses or you know say you have different types of cars you have the trucks old trucks new trucks and uh, different axle sets and so on so the load transmitted from that its own characteristics it will be transmitting to the say bridge deck and the other part is that if the bridge deck is not having smooth surface you have a lot of undulation sometimes cases like for example in the rainy season you have part walls form so you have a different kind of uh, unevenness on the this particular say bridge deck when the different speed vehicle different mass of the vehicles when the travel you have the different roads going to come on the say bridge also so the bridge is continuously subjected to the dynamic so these all called we have man made uh, vibration problem not related to the nature so again we can say summary is that uh, just slowly going to the what is the characters of this loading when you have wind loads and you have the say say vortex induced oscillation drag and lift coercion uh, lift uh, oscillations you have the sinusoidal function generally when you have earthquake you have the random excitations the frequency concern typically about 0.1 hertz to the say 50 hertz even sometimes people talking about 100 hertz also now if you talk about the blast load it's a very short duration so it could be about 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds and in the case of earthquake it could be about uh, 30 seconds or even some maximum will be about one minute so this is uh, the duration of the say earthquake is more than the shock loads and coming to the sinusoidal load like for example mission induced oscillations or the wind induced oscillations they are all going to be for long time so uh, I'm, why i'm telling that the characters of the loading dynamic loading coming at structures has the importance important bearing on the behavior of the structures when you have a sinusoidal loading it is going to be continuously going to be acting on the structure therefore there is always possibility to reach the steady state response but as in the case of shock as well as the earthquake loads the chance of reaching a steady state is very remote but it is in between the say mainly the, if you talk about the shock loads you have the free vibration characteristics mainly whereas in the case of earthquake it is between the say steady state and the transient responses so that's why that's what the time duration makes very important on the that it has a good and uh, great implications on the behavior of the structure so wind loads blast loads then uh, uh, ground excitation machine vibrations earthquake loads and pipe creeps as i mentioned these are the loads now other part is a say bridge so this is the same repetition but what i'm saying the bridge i want to say as i explained that the road surface uh, really going to have the great influence on the load transfer uh, onto the uh, structure and also the type of vehicle and what is the mass of the vehicle and its own characteristics uh, makes uh, the load transfer onto the bridge. So again, uh, you can see the little bit more characteristics. If you see the blast load, you cannot say like a triangular uh, shape or off sign shape, but if you see you have a very high frequency component because the time duration, you see it is only about 0.2 seconds, you see 200 milliseconds maximum or maybe 100 milliseconds but that's why you simulate like a triangular function so you have the, all the frequency whatever here here is covered into this kind of shape that's kind of assumptions are made in the case of blast loads in the case of uh, wind induced oscillations you can see the drag and lift uh, how they are more like a sinusoidal excitation so let us see some failures so that you know always say uh, you have to when you are attending say, any class like this or any uh, you know development program you should also have some feel what will happen when this kind of uh, loads are going to be there on the structure that's very very important that will motivate you to uh, become serious and try to understand what is the structural dynamics what to do when the such kind of loads coming on the structures to make the structure very safe on. so this is one uh, recent uh, you know hood hood the uh, you know uh, cyclone uh, recent more recent so the roof you know is a uh, is a uh, uh, totally fake uh, you know, uh, just one day before I was just there in this airport, uh, you know, I could, I was uh, about to take the flight, but I could not take because flight could not land because of the high winds. But the next day, we, when I saw the newspaper that this is the status of this one, you know, airport. See, what I want to say, the structure, super, you know, supporting structure is not a problem, but the roof with the whatever process you have. The, you know, roof, whatever is uh, sheets, nowadays you have very advanced uh, sheets with insulation characteristics and so on and so forth. But they have a connection with the say the truss structure to have the proper loading transfer and this uh, particular roof has a low frequency all the you know roof for material has a low frequency component they have a uh, you know what i want to say tendency to do a lot of vibration a lot of uh, oscillations when the wind flows over there 
and that particular anchorage, whatever the bolts and nuts you are going to use, generally you don't bother about the cyclic characteristics. When you have the cyclonic winds, you can see for a long time you have a large number of cyclic loads. If those things are not discussed, you know, designed with such kind of load, then there's a possibility of failure. Once that even one place gets open, you can have the cascading problem. That's what exactly happened here. So, you know, all we say that we are doing the good designs, everything is uh, taken care of as per the code, but still there are some kind of gaps in the design. That's why see this kind of failures also, even recently, this kind of failures happen. So the anchorages becomes very important. Why I'm stressing on that is that when you have the set passive devices, you know, or the, you know, vibration control devices, which you are going to use to reduce the wind induced dynamic loads or the earthquake induced dynamic loads or the, you know, blast induced dynamic loads and all. Those are going to be anyway you have to connect with the structure. So that particular interface, the anchorage is very important to you to ensure that they are properly taken care. That's what I just want to say that the connectivity of the dampers, again, that depends upon the, what is the performance levels you are looking for on the structures. Okay, I hope uh, you are slowly getting it. Now, it's a, now tall structures in the most of the cities, you have high rise buildings coming up, uh, you know, like anything. So these high rise buildings are definitely have the, you know, wind loads of this kind. So, but the wind load characteristics are generally, you have the frequencies are very low frequencies. If you talk about the tall structures, you have the time periods, maybe 10 or so, right? So you have this similar kind of uh, uh, the low frequency contents of the, let's say, wind loads are closely matching, going to match with the low frequency, long period characteristics of the structures. Therefore, the, you know, wind windows oscillation cannot be neglected if you want to ensure the safety of high rise buildings. Now blast, you know, you can say the triangular distribution. So it is a, you know, local kind of loads going to come there and there is a very well defined the codes are there, how to estimate the blast load going to come on the structures based on the blast charge and the distances you can evaluate. And of course, secondary effects also going to be there. So there's effects also like fire load and temperature and so on and so forth. Also you have to consider in addition to the mechanical loads coming because of the blast. So you have the say peak pressure relations with the time. So positive part and negative part. Yeah, negative part also very important in certain cases. People think that if you take care of the design for positive part, but you know, depends upon the, after when you, this particular uh, positive phase goes through that and the structure becomes very weak, even negative pair, yeah, you know, portion of the, you know, your uh, pressure also very important. So that point you have to catch, that's the reason I put this slide. So it's don't stop just to, in the first pay, you know, positive phase as well, alone, but also you should take the, take the negative phase of the blast pressure coming on. So you have various codes. Uh, you know, codes are available to estimate the special loads, uh, blast pressure coming out of structures, depends upon the distance and the uh, you know, charge uh, weights, and also type of charge. Also. Now, coming to the earthquakes, uh, you can see that. here. Let's take a look at the difference in the ground under wooden houses and nuclear power plants, and the difference in how the earthquake motion is transmitted. Mm -hmm. When an earthquake occurs, seismic waves are transmitted through the Earth's crust. And when these waves approach the surface, their acceleration and deformation are amplified. Most houses are built on 10 or more meters of relatively soft soil layered on top of bedrock. When an earthquake occurs, the amplitude of the seismic ground motion is large and the frequency is low. On the other hand, nuclear power plants are installed directly onto the bedrock. Therefore, the amplitude is small and the frequency is high. have a different effect on houses that are built on relatively soft ground and nuclear power plants that stand directly on hard bedrock. So I, this particular slide I very intentionally I just put uh, in front of you. Uh, main reason is that soil structure interaction. So if you, you know, people say that, you know, the soil structure interaction, some people have the idea that it will reduce the responses. You know, some people say that there's a shift in the period. So a lot of things are there. Now, when you talk about the structure, considering the equipment, piping, and they say uh, human beings uh, sitting on the structure. 
you have to you cannot neglect the say soil structure interaction now as per 1893 the you know your soil characteristics are you know soft soil medium soil or the hard rock based on the spt values you decide then you choose the even the spectra for design design basis then you start designing even say the seismic coefficient method is recommended to get that but that's not enough you know so i'm not uh, please remember that whatever i'm just telling that you know is not that i'm criticizing it in it please uh, uh, don't think like that so what i want to say there is uh, yes uh, confidently if you do this generally the safety is ensured but you cannot uh, ignore, ignore one of these aspects is soil structure interaction okay as a structure sometimes maybe but sometimes it may be conservative sometimes maybe not conservative but when you are trying to design then you are to trying to develop the design force and moments so you don't uh, neglect the soil structure interaction first ensure that even hard rock ensure that your structure doesn't have the much influence of the soil that's very important that's what i try to say and most of the structures when you talk the general structures when you talk you are related to the soft soil because surface when you talk about surface of the earth it's generally not very hard right because you are not going very deeper like uh, the nuclear power plants where the rock is reached then you start making the foundations so one should uh, be very careful about that's the main reason i want to say and the regarding the basics uh, of the earthquake motion you all know that what are the you know causes for earthquake what are the fault motions say, you know strike sleep normal and reverse you know again the wave propagations p and s waves so when it's coming to the surface dominated by the surface waves like relay waves lull waves etc etc therefore that is resulting into the acceleration versus time and that is going to be the common excitation on the building therefore the you know it is called um, this particular ground motion generates the self induced forces on the structure on the right side if you know that mx double dot plus uh, cx dot plus kx is equal to mx is double dot the m is the carats of the structure so yes the, the force generated on structures depends upon the inertia carats of the structure therefore we call self induced oscillation so the frequencies again depends upon the type of soil and uh, you know as i as you can see that also we should take care in the consideration when you have the design base and uh, anything you fail is not that you know structural engineers are playing a very very important role please remember that the structural engineers plays very very important role for the safety of the any facilities whether industry or the lifelines or critical facility whatever you name the structural engineers play a very very important role because they have to ensure not only the structure but also the like for example life if you take the hospital the oxygen line even water supply line you have to ensure that you know those things as functional otherwise your purpose of the hospital is lost there you understand so the pipes are the whatever the tubes whatever they they are going to be support on the structure you should have proper anchoring if you want to design those things you should have the structural engineer should give the proper input for that particular systems to see the design is adequate and ensure for the design based the safety requirements so that people i think you should keep in mind all the structural engineers is not that making the structure alone is uh, safe by the structural engineers but also you have to look for help the say other people to ensure their systems also safe and particularly the accidental loads like at fakes and so on now coming to the further this uh, again you have the space industry so you have the say uh, launching pads and all you can see the red one is the whatever the kind of shock generated because of the say racket leaving the you know launch pad but you know the launch pad is designed the blue one but still huge a huge acceleration very short duration about say even say 50 millisecond and so on so this is a very short load and very short duration loads and that peak as you are seen is a little longer time than the short loads now uh, you know that is uh, about the load characteristics what we are learned just now saw with the different kinds of loads but you also should not uh, you know you should also keep uh, the whole structure in mind so you cannot neglect uh, the whole structures because uh, you know uh, any structure as uh, uh, you know start using it becomes older maybe one day two day or 10 years 30 years 40 years and so on so forth but it has such a life and you have to keep watching and those uh, structures also you have to ensure the safety as today whatever you are looking to keep for for the whatever possible accidental uh, accident loads like whatever i said uh, it takes uh, you know high uh, you know what is a cyclonic winds even say some kind of the, your blast loads man in this blast and so on forth so on so forth you have to consider and ensure that the structures are safe so the you know the things what you have to look into the say uh, in the old structures are different because it has some kind of distressing because corrosion or some kind of settlement creep and sinkage many aspects make the structure weaker and same time the demand with respect to the excellent loads is similar to the same Uh, new structures, whatever you are designing, 
So with the same kind of loads, you have to also ensure, if you want to make this entry safe, you also ensure the structures uh, are safe under even old structures, which are de-stress. And so first you have to do the rehabilitation to the required level of the design as per for the normal loads. Then you have to see that those are also going to be safe even for the extent loads. That's what I'm trying to explain from this slide. And some of the recent earthquakes, again, you see the cranes totally collapsed because winds in the Mumbai airport, I think one year, one and a half year back. And in Vajak, you have tanks failure because of the, maybe the pressure variations, one of the reasons maybe. And you have the big uh, uh, disaster, right? I hope all of you remember. In uh, Mumbai, the world of bridges collapsed, then it has affected the whole, a lot of, uh, you know, mo movement of the trains and so on. So health of the old structure is very important. So these things are very common. So you have to keep the structural engineers has to keep watching old as well as new and ensure that the safety is maintained. Now here, this particular one, I'm trying to show that, uh, you know, you have the, say, the connections of, you know, as I mentioned that, you know, the, whatever the uh, Vajak uh, uh, airport, the, you know, the roof has failed basically because of the connection issues, what I understand, and the connection issues also explain what could be one of the reasons. Now, here also you see the most of the places, the connections between the say, steel structure you have, then you have the foundation is the say, the concrete structure, then the interface was the weaker ones. So, connections of steel structures of industries, small airports, each are the weak links, so one should be very careful. And as the time passes, aging effects of the interface also, you have to, cannot forget it. So, you have to take care of that. The ground displacements will have the differential effects. Interface of the two structural configuration, what are the things you are looking for? These are seen in most of the hazards, such as cyclones, earthquakes, and waves, such kind of effects. So, the interfaces are very important. Now, coming to the so, why that interface I mentioned is that when you talk about the control of the response using the dampers, the interface is important to ensure that damper is properly connected to the structure. That's only possible if you have uh, taken care of the, you know, at different performance levels, the connectivity is ensured. Now, uh, earthquakes can happen anywhere. As, so, this is another standard slide I show, show that. So on the left side, you have the failures of the structures and the, even the say, bridges and the piping system. And the Bhuj earthquake on the right side, you have the Kubay earthquake. So you can see that there are similar failures. Only the kind of uh, intensity or the acceleration levels on the, in the Kubay is about 0.2 G. This may be about 0.3 G. So, but the failures are same because your design base are according to the your uh, uh, you know, codes, whatever you observe for the past so many years, you will make the design base. So the low uh, uh, intensity, but that means what I want to say, low acceleration, design accelerations, whereas high intensity, high design acceleration because of, so Japan is a highly prone seismic, uh, you know, I, I, highly prone for seismic uh, loads. Therefore, uh, but you know, failures, what I want to say is there. So you cannot, uh, you know, ignore that based on the severity only you are looking for, uh, you know, uh, that, you know, you have to be serious about that quick design. Whatever the things are required, as per the history you have the fat peaks then you have to consider otherwise you have the similar kind of, uh, kind of failures uh, in the old world so why this subject is very important in certain situations of excitation properties of structure large force are induced causing failures as i mentioned that you have to see the characters of the excitations characters of the structures and uh, you know see uh, then you see that you know how the response coming and uh, depends upon this cat these two characteristics and the amplitude of excitation you have a large force going to come on the structure though the subject is being taught and practiced for many years failures are happening right so i just said so these are the recent failures i told these are happening why there are some gaps of understanding i said uh, for example say in this uh, uh, in a Vizak airport, the roof sheets interfaces are maybe people must have taken and nothing will happen because they're small elements. Uh, so maybe I'm not telling that <laughs> they are not totally neglected. Such kind of uh, details not there. So therefore, the seriousness in the designer, even the construction man must have been not there. So that's what I want to say that such kind of gaps are there. Therefore, still failures are there. So for example, we talk about the 1893 when you talk about, uh, say, uh, your soil structure interaction, the equipment structure interaction, still it's not uh, very clear right so therefore the there's a some kind of gap in the design maybe uh, as everybody think that what the procedure given the internet is very conservative therefore safety then should not so so you have to be very clear and go in deep and go for step by step procedures and uh, you know do the things uh, you know systematically and get the appropriate as per your knowledge it's not that uh, everybody you know uh, if i am talking it doesn't mean that i know everything 
is that you know whatever the best of knowledge we, we have so to that level we have to say and there is always good lessons you are learning by every so natural disaster right so you modify your designs and you modify your understandings and again you modify the codes many things happens uh, you know as a time pass there's a continuous demand to learn this subject more clearly by performing research update and uh, update teaching and the practice so this is one of the things i just wanted to tell that you know uh, see the fluid structure interaction I, I just mentioned about soil structure interaction now fluid structure interaction so this particular part is on the introduction to structural dynamics see the one tank is filled though it is awful so it must have it must have been a convective forces generated which maybe in the design must have not taken care or there's a possibility that the structure got distressed during the lifetime therefore uh, the capacity reduced and uh, when it's subject to the earthquake loads plus the you know uh, convective force generated because the structure is uh, the tank is not full and there was a uh, you know what is that uh, seeing the complete uh, you know excitation of the say convective pressure sample structure maybe one of the reasons so that another example typical example if you have a tanker going on to the bridge you can see the a lot of tankers over top of right? so you have the off full uh, you know tanker generally is not full then you have a lot of oscillations you have convective forces so that makes a uh, toppling of this vehicle so similar to the tank they have the similar kind of things even on the vehicles traveling on the say bridge deck even on the roads so soft story concepts also have the big issues and uh, you know still people are making the soft story but uh, in most of the north ridge earthquake and kobe earthquake even say for example bridge earthquake the soft, soft story concepts not uh, really done very good job and uh, you know the, the idea was the code was accepting before but uh, the reason was that you have a good amount of energy dissipation in the soft story therefore your responses may come down that was the concept the initial thought but recently it's not acceptable so that's what i want to say that as a time process you are keeping on learning and updating your knowledge and failures are there because some of things we miss uh, which may not be clearly understood are some sometimes even miss uh, miss to consider everything and sometimes even the structure get distressed and overlooked so uh, you have a soft story you have the structure you know soil structure interactions that's why even the poor soil you know so you can see the how the structures are just uh, toppled and become very stable unstable you can see the superstructure good but you know soft story made the big top right? so the soft story concept and soil structure interaction fluid structure interaction one cannot ignore and uh, you should uh, design the things properly considering these effects also now uh, i just uh, suddenly i put uh, the concept of the base isolation i just want to say that you know the anchorages for example we have isolators so you can see here you can see the isolators connected to the say, footings and this footings if you have uh, not properly designed for the design base the interface force what they are coming then the purpose of isolator is not going to be there so we'll learn more on these isolators a bit later i just want to show that the anchorage connections are very important that also you cannot neglect while designing such kind of uh, control devices just one second i think okay now uh, just to briefly the static and dynamic problems so you have in the static problem is uh, potentially is uh, equated to the external or external, external work done then you have the uh, whatever the balance of forces then you try to see the response uh, what is coming on the structures which are generally not uh, depends upon the time it is a fixed values in the case of dynamics you have time varying uh, things and you have two more terms that is damping term and inertia term this makes you to think about the control of the response of the structures by varying these parameters you can definitely uh, our applied force is constant say applied work done is constant by controlling these uh, terms like uh, damping term and inertia term even k term uh, so that you can see that the balance is maintained and uh, you know the amplification is not there and uh, that's the reason you have some kind of thinking uh, where you can have the control of the responses using these extra features of the you know uh, equilibrium equation compared to the static equation and you know very well so why the linearity that is a people uh, you know solution is in s so you always have the damping is equated to the proportion to the velocity so these all you know i no need to repeat that only i just want to say that you have extra terms which can be uh, looked into and you can have change of those terms to have less responses in the structure that's what i want to say so you will understand more details later on 
So generally equation of motion, if you say structure of the single league operating system, though you have the forces, as I say, so machine induced forces, so MR omega square, then you have the uh, you know, induced uh, forces, CL rho AB square, and it also has some kind of uh, vertex frequency components. So you have excess. system then you have to write the equation of motion and solve it for the responses and also this is one of the things you have to look into because uh, you know your structures are sorry one second so you always talk about uh, you always talk about uh, say long period structures or short period structures uh, i think i just this particular one got disturbed so you have the long period structures or the short period structure based on the spans and heights. So this also has a, a, a great influence on the total response of the structure with respect to the excitations are concerned. So that part also should be very clear. Now, when you see wind induced oscillations, uh, they are generally of the low frequency. And uh, the structures which has a low frequency has a, uh, you know, more affinity to have the more dynamic loads. Uh, no need to discuss about all these things you must have known. Uh, those things as per IS875. So vertex uh, 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 shading frequency you can calculate based on this uh, vertex frequency formula, which is function of strong numbers and velocity and the dimensions of the, let's say, structure. Particularly here, I'm just taking the structure is supporting uh, the equipment, but also going to secondary loads, those are very significant and has to be considered in the design of the, say, a portal frame, which is supporting this kind of a cylindrical structure. So I think this is the basics I want to say that how to calculate the loads. Uh, so you have the harmonic loads. Uh, see, always we look for when you talk about the dynamic loads, you have a spectrum, right? Harmonic spectrum, you have the shock spectrum, you have the uh, earthquake response spectrum. Those are function of the you know frequency ratios and the, what is the vertical axis, the dynamic uh, response or the dynamic amplification factor, which are functions of the frequency ratio as well as uh, say uh, your uh, damping values. Now, if you have a very uh, uh, low frequency, that means very rigid system, omega natural frequency, then it's uh, like a static problem. When you have the very low uh, frequency, then it is going to be isolation. So you still you have the larger response. So the change of low frequency means I can change the K and M. I can try to see that even if you fix a mass, but I can change the K and uh, to get the very low value of omega N so that I have low dynamic force. So this kind of flexibility is there, as I mentioned, mx double dot plus kx plus cx dot is good applied force. That's why you are able to control the vibration. Otherwise, if you don't have this uh, particular basic equation, the Lambert principle or Newton's laws, then you know it would have been very difficult to have uh, you know good life because structure is always subject to the dynamic loads. Similarly, the say for example shock loads. Uh, we always mention, I think, these things also one uh, should be very uh, carefully noticed that in the case of harmonic excitation, we talk about omega by omega n. In the case of, uh, say, shock loads, we talk about uh, Td by Tn. In the case of harmonic load, you know the well-defined uh, excitation frequencies. In the case of shock loads, you have well-defined time duration depends on the charge and the distances. Therefore, uh, the, if you don't have the well-defined frequency of excitation, therefore, you always refer Td by Tn. And it has certain kind of implication. You have the range of uh, around one, then you have a good amount of applications. So These are generally much less than the you know harmonic excitations. So I think that principle is based on the damping and uh, because the time duration, you know the uh, transient part and the steady state part. Therefore, the amplifications are small in this case of shock loads. So I hope this uh, domal integration, everything you know very well to get the uh, that particular spectrum evaluation. Now uh, uh, this perform low you know, payment loads bridge. Uh, Codes are silent, for example, on the explicit dynamic loads coming up. Even say IRC code, they are not very clear about what are the dynamic loads to be considered on the design of the bridges. So brake loads uh, is not very clear. Collision loads, vehicles are going to be uh, colliding each other. There is explosions possible. Right? The collision even the bottom, even collision on the top of the deck also possible. So this kind of uh, things only now, uh, you know, yesterday, when uh, yesterday, before the, as day before yesterday, I saw the Himachal Pradesh uh, landslides, the uh, stone rolled. So that kind of observations make you think better and better design. So the nature teaches you, then you have the better improvement. Similarly here also, because 
the vehicles uh, traffic is increasing use of this uh, you know whatever the light lens also becoming very important and this possible loads also there you have to consider in the design that's why so as the time passes you learn and try to improve the designs and still if you you know if not taken the structures which are not taken these aspects there's every possibility that it may fail and if such kind of loads happening happening on the structure so random loads so you have different class of the road surfaces class uh, a b c d and so on so the when you go to the higher side you are you are reaching towards the pothole kind of characteristics and the bridge deck so but otherwise the displacement variation on the bridge deck with the different uh, this is about uh, so uh, it, this is not the earthquake load and the class b loading you have you can see that how it is uh, varying with the say it is a displacement and that is the uh, what i want to say is not uh, the variation of the verticality of that particular bridge deck even say this is 0 0.01 meter into the thousand so that kind of millimeter variation is there in the case of grade b when you go to c d and all these variations are very large and this kind of random loads has to be considered uh, you know in order to design the bridge deck. so uh, i just want to say that this loads uh, you have to be very clear and uh, and load characteristics are uh, should be understood then you know you also have to see the characteristic of the particularly free vibration caps of the structure and see where you are standing and uh, that has a and damping of the structure has a great influence on the overall response going to come on the structures so i just uh, wanted to see what happened just one second please so when you want to go very fast sometimes it also plays the brake so you have a shock load on the your total movement of your lecture okay i think that is what is happening so uh, this is all i just briefly i'm telling so you have equation of motion with the known forces and you have different uh, integration schemes generally use the implicit uh, methods you all know what is the reasons why you use the implicit schemes then coming to this you know response spectrum the response spectrum is nothing but response of the single degree of freedom system uh, that is also equal to the structure of a single degree of freedom uh, nature then when uh, whatever the maximum response for that uh, frequency of the single degree of freedom system what you plot on the response spectrum so you have a different single degree of freedom system because your structure can be represented in the form of single degree of freedom system even in the case of multi degree of freedom system you can break into equivalent single degree of freedom system that's why the response spectrum has become very easy for the designer to handle and uh, also you have uh, you know as I mentioned, you know, there's a gap, right? So always, again, don't uh, think that I'm pointing out 1893. So you don't have the time histories compatible with the response spectrum. Therefore, if you want to have the design inputs for the, say, uh, you know, structure uh, supporting the equipment, piping, and so on and so forth, always people have some kind of, uh, you know, doubts how to solve it. So you're required to generate time histories. Then further, you have to, you know, generate spectra, which can be used for design of the floor mounted equipment. So there's a gap in the 1890. So there's a part of seven, I think part seven or so is going to come up to design of equipment and piping system. There it will be explained. This kind of time histories will be given. And it's, uh, you have the users or designers have the, uh, you know, uh, what is that uh, inputs to generate the time histories at different flow levels and generate the response spectrum, which can be used for the equipment and piping people. So you have that, that gap will be closed once you define. Also, there is a simple procedure from the design-based ground motion, how you are going to generate the you know, flow uh, uh, levels uh, ground motion, that method is also given so that equipment people, uh, equipment and piping people, uh, even say electrical systems or instrumentation, they don't find difficult to, to get the, uh, you know, what is input for design of those things. Because the safety of the facilities depends not only the structure, but also the other features of the you know facilities one should not ignore that if you ignore then you have the some kind of accidents that's what i'm telling so as the time passes you keep on increasing and try to improve the better design and the better concepts so that your safety is ensured so uh, so this is how we talk about the response spectrum for uh, the various uh, loading conditions now if you see here i think i i always love this to put in this slide you have the say harmonic you have a large amplification one by two zeta in the case of resonance case in the case of earthquake you have about 2.5 to 3 is the maximum uh, amplifications you will find in earthquake in the case of say uh, shock loads you have 1.5 or 2 maximum you have so there's a maximum amplifications are possible in the case of harmonic then you have the response you know earthquake motion then you have the blast load but the force amplitudes in the case of blast is very very large that's why you'll see that uh, you know uh, structures are failing you have a blast loads also so these characteristics you have to keep and also the frequency dependent characteristics are time dependent characteristics also very important if you want to understand if you want to understand the 
uh, part of this uh, my presentation on the response spectrum. So again, I just explained how to break into the multi freedom system into single freedom system, then how to get the responses. Uh, may be subjected to the even uh, harmonic excitation or the shock spectrum, or shock excitation or the epic excitation concepts will be same, except that the participation factors what you calculate in the case of blast loads and uh, say uh, harmonic loads are different. So I hope those parts you know very well. Now coming to the fluid structure interaction is very important to, to estimate the say uh, convective as impulsive pressures. If you neglect it, that's a kind of failures already shown, such kind of failures are going to be there. So that's what the reason that you cannot ignore the fluid structure interaction. Now coming to the say uh, uh, soil structure interaction, so you have always uh, so for example you have the spectra for you know site dependent or international level or the nation level. You have hard rock, medium soil, and soft soil. The definition of the medium hard rock soil and the say soft soil depends on you know just to pick up the you know say uh, spectrum suitable spectrum only design basis. But the interaction of the so, uh, you know structure and soil is not. Uh, uh, taken care by that particular definition of the soft soil, medium soil, as well as the hot rock condition. So you have to take the impedances of the soil and the, with the structure and see that the natural characteristics of the structure along with the you know, soil is not uh, totally different from with without conditions. So you have to ensure that. So soil structure interaction very important role because if there is a, a significant change in the frequency with the soil structure interaction, you can see the variation of the responses depends upon the structure, which part of the uh, you know, spectrum the structure stands. Sometimes it's beneficial, sometimes it may not be beneficial at all. For example, you see here, this is the say frequency. If a soil it reduces, there is a, re a reduction in the upside, up, uphill of this response. But in the downhill of the spectrum, there's an increasing response. So one should not increase, so you should be explicitly calculate and see the soil structure interaction effects in order to estimate the realistic force and moments. So fluid structure interaction, soil structure interaction. Another important thing is, uh, so I saw this. Okay. I think already we have seen this. The ground under nuclear power plants. I think it is. Uh, sorry, that already we have seen. So I just do uh, repetition. I think uh, we have time is uh, one second. Just wait, please. You should have patience, uh, particularly when you want to say. Yeah. So, uh, soil structure interaction, I just talked about it. So, then we go for the equipment in structure interaction. Particularly, this equipment structure interaction is very important. You see the industries, not only the nuclear power plants, you have the industries. You see, the particular equipment is very huge, right? And which is supported on the, say, even say ducts, etc. Uh, even I think maybe this is a cement plant. You can see that, you know, how the uh, passes of the whatever the material. Is a developed, you know, what, uh, the whole process is formation of clinker, then uh, you are grinding, it is uh, dropping from there, you know, the powder of the, say, um, limestone, then you pass into the kiln, then it will become the clinker, then it goes to other parts. So, these are all equipment required in, uh, in the case of cement industry. Therefore, you see, this uh, interaction of this particular ducts or the piping system cannot be ignored, or ignored with respect to the interaction of the structure supporting and uh, in, even the whatever the uh, whatever they call the cylindrical uh, passages there. So, so the equipment structure interaction very important. So, uh, structural engineers should not do anything in isolation unless you take the interaction efforts. Like, if you have a structure like you know a very huge structure like residential building, all these things like ants is not a problem. Or pipes in the structure, not this kind of piping system, but small small piping tubes and all these ants on the like structure. But if you talk about these equipments, uh, you should be really you should not ignore the the interaction effects. So that will definitely change the total characteristics of the stiffness, mass, and the hence the natural frequency of the structure. Therefore, your dynamic response already you have seen with the response spectrum, which are function of the frequencies. When you change the frequencies for a given damping, you have a variation of the response. So another typical like, example you can explain with this particular tree with the monkeys or the birds sitting. But if you have monkeys, there is every possibility that you will try to disturb other branches start vibrating it. So depends upon the excitation coming depends upon the type of equipment you have the interactions with one cannot ignore so we have certain criteria called decoupling criteria you have even IS 1893 you have to understand that that criteria is to ensure the 
no, not much change in the frequency of the structure, therefore, the response of the structure and hence the inputs, whatever you are going to generate for design of the equipment and piping also not uh, in error. That's the reason you have to check the decoupling criteria to take the equipment structure interaction. So equipment structure interaction and the fluid structure interaction, side structure interaction, one should be very carefully considered and uh, generate the forces and excitation. So it also have a lot of influence on the structural behavior. One cannot uh, ignore that part also. So in the modeling, it's uh, very important that you know proper mesh is very important. Not that you know you have the today's uh, very high speed computers. You put a huge number of degree of freedom and solve the problem. Don't try to do that. You have to have minimum required the sizes in order to pick up the its own dynamic characteristics and uh, which are again related with the excitation characteristics in model up to that. But if you have a huge degree of freedom, huge size of the problem, sometimes you have the numerical errors and you may make mistakes in the numerical solution. So please make a reasonable, uh, you know, required fine entanglement uh, models, not to go for the too many degree of freedom, which may not be required, but you are going to end with the errors in the uh, numerical procedures. So I just given this uh, as a glance through this, uh, so that you have certain procedure, how to fix the mesh for the substructure elements as well as superstructure. So, then uh, if you have in different materials, how to get the modal damping is, uh, say, uh, stain and principle, you can get the dampings of the, if you have a mini uh, composite structure, steel and the steel and, say, con concrete, you have different material, different dampings allowed by the course, you can take the effect of uh, together if they are participating significantly in the same mode. So you have the modal damping based on the stain and its principle. So, uh, so this is the concepts for evaluating the response of the structure using the time histories. Once you get the, you know, if you do the modal analysis, then you have the participation factors and uh, you know you can calculate the model displacements using the stiffness matrix of the elements you can get the forces and that can be combined suitably and to get the final response so this is the overall way you can uh, say that structural and the various steps involved in the analysis uh, multi-degree multi film system can be summarized as collect the data such as geometry material and so on and so forth generate suitable uh, you know final model perform the eigenvalues then you know the response spectrum response uh, analysis and get the force and movement that can be used for the design and same time we also have the time histories at different floors and get the time history response spectrum for uh, you know design of the equipment and piping systems that's the next step one should not ignore in the overall design of the structures and uh, ensuring the safety of the structure equipment and piping systems so in summary what i would say you have to have a better design to take the you know you should have low inertia high energy absorption, high redundancy, high flexibility, high bearing capacity. So this is uh, what I like this slide because when I was uh, sitting near this particular, uh, you know, mangroves, I could see how they are growing. So they first to develop good foundation, then the branches come up. Please watch this when you have the chance to go to the how the, you know, these mangroves are very strong even. So for, you know, for example, tsunami or high winds, you know, it is uh, very important, right? You cannot touch this particular mangroves because they are very strong. And the growth you can watch so such kind of things features if you are able to build in the structures you have a very safe structures considering these parameters uh, you can have a better safe structures so this is the first part of my lecture and uh, you know if you have any questions uh, we can have small discussion for five minutes thanks uh, for the you know patient hearing of the first part of my lectures please and this is my book so whatever i talk there everything is there with a lot of case studies with the this was published with the help of my colleagues and even say co-authors. So we have, yes, there are some kind of corrections may be required in the typing problems and some because we made little hurriedly so that we are trying to correct it and it have, but most of things are very clearly discussed. So you can look into that book and if you feel you can have the copy of it. So this is the first part. I think uh, we have a uh, three, 15 times. So we have uh, two more parts. Let us see how I can cover it, but I can have five minutes for discussions if you have any questions, please. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Yeah, are you there? Uh, because I'm only talking silently because this is the thing, you know, you cannot see the people. So <laughs> I assume that everybody is there. Uh, any questions on this part, first part? Because I spoken because uh, very fast. And this is the introduction of the structural dynamics. Any questions you have, so I'm there to answer. At least two, three questions I can take up. If no questions, then I can move. Yes, please, uh, Radhika, you have any uh, questions collected, please? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Okay. Pardon? Chat chat. There Hello? are no questions in the chat box. So I think you can proceed. 
Oh, that means uh, people are understanding very good, <laughs> right? <na? laughs> That's yes, nice. Yes, so I'll move to the part. Two. Yes. Yes. Uh, I just I don't know why this uh, system not coming up uh, out. Okay, one second. So, okay, that's fine. So let let me open the next part. I hope all of you are able to uh, catch me or uh, you know are able to follow me. If you have any doubts or anything, you know, you have any suggestions, please suggest. Nothing wrong, you know, so that I can uh, even say, say next two parts I can try to improve to see that you are getting it. See, it's not that, you know, just attending for the name, see, try to catch the things and try to understand things. Maybe if you try to interact with me, I also learn some of the things so that, you know, it is on the mutual, uh, what is the interactions and always interactions very important in the subject I said, right? You have equipment, piping and the soil and the fluid, so on and so forth. So interactions are very important. So if you want to understand the subjects better, you should interact with the teacher or maybe the lecturer and the participant uh, very effectively. Then you can learn the things better. So we'll move to the second part. So second part, as I mentioned, is on the performance-based design. Please watch this particular topic is uh, because first part is you all may be knowing very well, but whatever ideas I have, I shared with you. Now coming to the second part, this is second part. Second part. So you have to really uh, uh, very carefully, very what I want to say, uh, follow me and uh, participate very seriously. So I hope all of you are able to see my slides, please. Second part of my lecture response control of structure subject to dynamic loads, performance based design. Are you able to see, please? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So let us see that in you know, a performance based design. So this is one of the, you know, maybe biggest structure uh, people tested. Maybe people means we only tested. Yeah. People say in the world, but I don't have much knowledge about in the world what are the structure. But in the country, definitely is the uh, biggest structure tested uh, for performance based design to generate the data. And it's also gone through many uh, stages. So first of all, it has gone through the, you see, you know, first stage uh, is a full scale structure tested till is a, it's some part of the structure existing in the Department of Atomic Energy. And uh, we made uh, the full scale structures. And this is as per 456 at the tailing. And uh, after failure, again, it is uh, retrofitted with the you know, FRP technology. And uh, saw that you know there was a lot of efforts behind this and to see that it's, you know, it is softened. But definitely, you have a good amount of uh, loading. Uh, you know, you're, you're able to get back. See, see, as you can see, the dark one is uh, after retrofitting. The dotted one but you lost the stiffness but it has a good capability to stand the dynamic loads this is what we found and the kind of uh, cracking and all if you see why i'm showing this picture and why this performance based design i'm trying to introduce is that when you are putting the you know control devices control devices in sense of dampers isolators and so on and so forth you have to be very clear what type of uh, performance you are expecting in the structure if you say this kind of failures and you have the, some kind of anchors of uh, your dampers there, no, no use. The damper is not going to uh, help anyway. Now, we also can see the energy dissipation of the structure. If you see it's uh, 80 tons, right? We have so much dissipation. This kind of energy is going to dissipate. And if you try to take the advantage of the damper to as an energy dissipator, whatever the energy dissipation capability you are going to introduce the damper in the different flow levels, that will be almost, say, negligible compared to the disenergy capabilities. So these uh, things has to be, uh, in, you know, to understand in uh, together. If you don't, uh, you know, neglect, you know, the other part, sometimes you may be doing the some kind of, uh, you know, not correct things, what I want to say. Suppose the structure is, say, in the elastic condition, definitely it's going to be, uh, the dampers are going to be very good. But if you go to the nonlinear, some portion of the nonlinearity, so I, I think you are going to learn more clearly, then you see the area under this is 80 tons into the calibre displacement, the energy, your own cycle you can see very very large even if you put a something like about one ton of the dampers at each floor you have one two three four five five into two you have ten ten into the ten tons only right ten into say one is about ten tons ten tons and eighty tons that is a kind of difference so the energy dissipation between these particular dampers what you are going to put on the structures 
And the structure, when you go into the nonlinear deformation, the energy dissipation capabilities, uh, the properties, is not that uh, uh, that much of the dampers compared to the even worn structure. So that part one should be very careful because most of the literature, most of the papers, if you see, these parts are not explicitly talked about. Therefore, your performance-based design becomes very, very important. Now, coming to here, I just uh, want uh, the same structure I tried to show again. Now, if you see the, you know, you do the always linear analysis, right? With the dampers or absorbers or isolator. Uh, isolator is okay, as I'm in, uh, uh, you know, considering as a linear behavior is quite good of the superstructure. But in the case of absorbers and the dampers, when you assuming you do the all analysis, assuming the structure is elastic. Right, so but actually, your actual characteristics, you know, if you take only the ductility characters, nonlinear characteristics, this is the actual characteristics. Now, where you want to see the performance of the structure with the dampers, that point on the actual characters of the structure you have to be able to locate carefully. Then only you are going to do proper calculations and your designs will be very good. Okay, so, uh, so one second, yeah, I hope that point slowly, slowly catch it. Uh, now, you know, this is our, say, design basis spectrum, as the IS-89 tree we have. Then you have different frequency of the structure, you have different responses. Now, this particular one, you see, if you see the actual portion is, you can see the, that four-story structure also have the similar kind of things. And this particular the drop is because of only the ductility characteristics. The meaning is the redundancy. Let us say the redundancy and uh, the over strength is taken care, but, you know, you have the actual characteristics like this. Now, where you want to take the advantage of the damper, you have to decide on that. So that's why the performance-based design is becoming very popular. And one should understand, I think most of the people in the country uh, doing the research, I think uh, if you go to any college, any university, you'll find a good number of uh, thesis, MTech or a PhD thesis on performance-based design. So now uh, the performance-based design, some of the gaps, uh, what are the things you have to look into, I'm going to talk here. So you have the, how do you define the performance levels, operation level, immediate occupancy, say for example, hospitals, even say important buildings, you have to ensure that between the operation and the immediate occupancy. So even if you have immediate occupancy, you have some amount of energy dissipation in the structure. But that energy dissipation compared to the dampers, so maybe the dampers energy dissipation much more than, the, so there you can take good amount of energy, you know, uh, uh, you know what's the advantage of the dampers. But if you go for the life safety and collapse prevention, taking the advantage of dampers becomes uh, not uh, realistic. The reason I said that the area, whatever energy losses in the structure is much, much more than the energy losses in the dampers. So that part has to be taken care and that is only possible if you do the nonlinear analysis or if you ensure the performance of the structure with certain levels and ensure the connectivity also is ensured, then it's possible that you are going to take the advantage of the the control devices like dampers and the, say isolators even some absorbers so that's what i wanted to say you have the uh, minor damage you know in the case of immediate uh, occupancy limited damage so you have major damage where you have to life safety so you have to temporarily vacate and you recover and later on you join collapse prevention is anyway you cannot reuse it unless you have a detailed uh, you know, rehabilitation, then retrofitting, then only you can start using even then. It's possible, definitely I cannot say that you can totally ignore. It's not that you have to make it uh, totally off. It's not required. If you do proper rehabilitation, retrofitting, I said, no, already we have tested till total failure, but still we could get back good amount of strength. That kind of concepts are also possible, not that under that week it reaches the collapse prevention state, then you cannot throw the structure. So I always suggest that throwing the structure is not a good idea. The reasons, uh, you know, I think when I was talking about uh, what is that called, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you want to say uh, uh, you know, material utilization, so, you know, uh, uh, what I want to say, uh, what you call that, uh, the material, suppose you make the structure, uh, uh, you know, and it is a say collapse or you have a lot of distressing under say any loading conditions. If you want to make the same structure after uh, demolishing that, you can think about the extra materials, extra resources, starting from the, you were say, for example, steel structure starting, a concrete structure starting from the line, then the energy. If you calculate, you have, a, you have to utilize the, a lot of resources, you know, then, you know, then uh, uh, resources uh, which uh, you are consuming as well as possible, and in the future, you will not have the resources, right? I think that kind of thinking also there in the case of uh, course, people are thinking you should use the material just enough to in make the structure, not that uh, lavishly start using the material, uh, you know, which may, may not be required. Okay, 
uh, so sustainability for example sustainability when i that word i was looking for sustainability point of resources then you have to have a better optimized design in that point of view when the structure is distressed too much because of the accidental loads like earthquakes or cyclone winds it is suggested to get back by proper rehabilitation that's what i want to say okay sustainability <laughs> okay now uh, you know uh, structure with the damper i just want to mention no, that your dampers will be connected in the case of uh, say uh, say in the case of uh, elastoplastic dampers which is this is the energy dissipation right so the structure is close to the operation limit or the say you know you have the immediate occupants condition definitely this kind of energy dissipation will be more significant than its own energy dissipation capability of the structure therefore it can be used for the control of the response so we'll discuss a little more but i just want to introduce the, the concept so similarly isolators which makes the structure very flexible so your omega by omega and characteristics i mentioned right even say the response spectrum long period you don't have much acceleration again important thing is the connections between the structure whatever the deck and the uh, you know uh, uh, column whatever the connections you have so you have to define proper you know performance uh, requirements uh, with respect to the design basis accidental loads so now coming to this particular if you want to have the better performance uh, characters of the building we should understand the element characteristics very well. So element characteristics could be column, beam, and the beam column joints. If you talk about RC structure, I'm just focusing on the RC structure because if you understand the RC structure's performance evaluations very well, then steel and other structures becomes, anyway, leaving the same masonry, I'm talking steel structures becomes very easy than whatever concrete structure. That's why I've taken the concrete structure as an example to discuss. So when you want to say that overall behavior, the moment, uh, you know, characteristics of the various beams and columns are shown here. If you take one particular uh, section, you see the point of, uh, you know, you have the point of contraction here, then you have a 50% of the beam, then 50% uh, of the column, you have point of contraction, and maximum movements are at the, uh, you know, giant level, okay? So, uh, considering this aspect, you have to have the characteristics, I think those are working on the performance-based design, you give the hinge characteristics at the you know, location where you have the maximum movement, the hinge length and all you have certain, uh, you know, class, you know, what is that empirical variations, which location you have to consider and what are the hinge length, et cetera, et cetera, all the provisions are there. So that you have to take properly and, uh, uh, you know, try to have the hinge characteristics of the beam and column. And sometimes you assume the joint is very rigid, depends upon the type of reinforcement detail. But uh, assuming as a, so that part, just uh, we'll see some part, you know, when we are testing and what is the behavior, when is very significant, when it is not significant, we are going to learn. So considering the behavior of the, you know, if performance, uh, you know, what is sometimes called the capacity evaluation of the existing structure or the new structures, it depends upon how best you understand the structure element characteristics, structure component, component when I say beam column joints and uh, elements may be like column and column, how best you understand matters. If you understand that better, then you can also evaluate the capacity of the structure better. So these capacities are, uh, depends upon the sizes. For example, now we say capacity in terms of the ductility, one of the parameters you want to define, then the you know sizes are very important. You have the, say for example, uh, ductility is uh, say, if you have a huge capacity, say about 21 tons like that, then you can see huge small ductility is because the failures are like more uh, flexure failures. So then you have the higher ductility when you have more flexure, you know, flexure failures. In the left side is a more shear failures. I'm sorry if I mentioned as a flexure, that's wrong. So the large sizes, you have a shear failures, therefore you have less ductility. In the small size, you have large you know, flexure failures, therefore you have the high ductility. So these points has to be the in between you have the, uh, you know, both effects of shear as well as flexure. So those things are very important. Sorry, sorry, I think. Just one second, please. I think there are films, so this kind of, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm sorry, I think just wait. And this is whenever you have a film, then this kind of problem comes. So the sizes plays a very, very important role. And that characteristics of the shear effects as well as the flexure effects, you have to take care properly. If you don't take care of uh, the characteristics of the elements and components of the structure properly, you are not going to evaluate the, you know, performance, uh, uh, the capacity of the structure very well. If you don't evaluate the capacity of the structure very well, then your, uh, what I want to say, performance-based design is a question mark. So these things you have to carefully, want, uh, you know, know that. 
So a uh, lot of structures are tested on the both the you know pushover kind of loading shake table test. A lot of tests are done. So based on that, I just to show that see the same structure when you have the, some kind of pushover loading, you can see the kind of failures in with the joint also becoming very weak. But it doesn't have a flow, right? But when you talk about uh, say uh, uh, some places you have flow, but some places you do not have the flow. Okay. Now coming to the see this is you have the floors and you can see how the failures are. See, even cyclic load, you have some kind of crash kind of uh, uh, failures in the joint. And there's some places, you know, even most of the joints are even, say, near to the joint also. For example, here at the foundation level, you have a hinge formation. Now, uh, so a lot of observations and try to have the good modeling techniques and a uh, lot of reports are published and we try to share this particular reports. Most of the people in the country, I'm thinking, have this kind of reports you can see here you have slab but you know you have the you know joint is not shown very big uh, issues but whereas near the elements we are seeing a lot of hinge formation so it depends upon the the connectivity of the slab and the strength of the slab and the joint you know all the elements and the components how they are connected integrated also matters so you can ask what, yeah yes please full screen, full screen is not coming sir. okay sorry, sorry i think i missed it i'm sorry yes i thought of showing a lot of films but uh, anyway uh, I just uh, one second. Yeah, so you have a lot of animations and also I just want to show that how structure fails uh, and how important these elements and the components in order to model it and getting the capacity of the structure. That's what I want to tell out here. Yeah, so here if you don't uh, you know understand the kind of uh, FX and failure mechanisms, there's a possibility of getting the capacity spectrum is quite different. You can see here large number of institute, large number of people participated in this exercise. The black one is the actual capacity of the structure. Whereas, you know, in the case of uh, many people, you can see how the variation of the capacity. So if this kind of understanding, I think today, this was about maybe 10, 15 years back. Today, understandings have improved a lot because many people put a lot of efforts to understand the element characteristics better and also the in a modeling uh, techniques and the uh, constitutive relations, confinement effects, many things are now improved uh, uh, parameters considered and improve the you know calculation methods, calculation procedures. So your performance evaluation or the capacity evaluation may be better than whatever I am showing here. Otherwise, we have if you don't do, take care of these aspects, what I'm trying to show, then you are going to have the capacity of the structure too much variation from the actual. Now, if you take the sum of these curves as assuming they are correct and we have done the better you know proper uh, capacity evaluation then your performance is what you are going to define as say yeah, this is going to perform like this you know immediate occupancy or collapse prevention or you know the life safety so is a totally different therefore always there is a possibility of the failures right so why the failures are still continuing maybe it's one of the some of the reasons of this kind you can i hope uh, I interpret like that so uh, the element characteristics are the component characteristics you have to understand better, you have to model better to get the proper capacity uh, of the structure. We say capacity curve. And the capacity spectrum, later on, how you are going to convert the capacity curve into capacity spectrum, that's what you are going to use in the performance-based design. Slowly, slowly, you will understand. So the steps involved is that, you know, you can see here, you have to calculate what is the, you know, load versus deflection and convert into the, Expected acceleration versus uh, spectral displacement. The red one is the demand spectrum. The blue one is the your, the interface uh, intersection point of we say the performance point for a given design. But you have to do some kind of iteration because when you reach here, there is a energy dissipating capabilities of the structure there, right? That you have to take into consideration, not just to take in superposing the capacity spectrum and the demand spectrum. You cannot tell the performance point as the interface. So you have to also give the some kind of credit of the energy dissipation. Therefore, there is a change in the demand. And again, you have to do some kind of iteration so that you have a converged point of uh, intersection to say that is a performance point for the given design basis. So for that, again, again, it depends upon your performance based design, depends upon the capacity, how best you can, you are going to evaluate. So this is how the steps you have acceleration versus uh, displacement convert the load versus deflection into the acceleration versus uh, displacement. So, okay, uh, that is spectral displacement, otherwise you call displacement of the roof displacement, what we are plotting as a capacity of the structure. So, point is here that this energy, right? So, at uh, this area, whatever is you are, uh, you are going to calculate as an energy dissipation, therefore, there is a reduction in the demand of the uh, demand onto the structure. 
Now, this kind of reduction because of the equivalent damping in the structure generated because of the structure gone to into the nonlinear characteristics. But if you talk about now dampers, you try to put this energy will be much, much more than the dampers capability to dissipate the energy. A small contribution may be there, but this definitely this is going to be dominating compared to the damper. So that part you should be very clear when you are designing the dampers into the structure for different performance. So this part I want to say that again, I'm stressing on that is not i not seen as per my knowledge that details are presented in any, any lecture so i just i thought it is a right point to discuss because maybe satish kumar and uh, trikala they are going to have the discussion on the design aspects of the dampers i'm also going to discuss but uh, you know at this point it's very important to catch and you have to consider while making the designs with the dampers now uh, again you know you have to also be very careful when you talk about the existing structures you want to say retrofitting or uh, improving the performance of the seismic performance or dynamic performance structures of the existing structures you have to really take care of uh, evaluating capacity of the spectrum considering the distress conditions or you have to see ensure that the distressing element distressed elements are uh, restored back to the original capacity then you start taking the capacity that is uh, that point is very important in the case of old structures so steps is uh, like portal frame I just said. So you have the element characteristics, you know, stiffness, considering the three degree of freedom to translations is only say plain uh, uh, frame we are considering. So uh, to explain the whole uh, uh, procedure. So you have rotation and two translations. So you have the stiffness matrix of uh, one, two, three, then assemble the stiffness matrix and solve the static problem for increasing the load. But one should be very careful when you are trying to do and the elastic condition is fine, but you know the vertical load is also helps to behave on the behavior of the columns. As you know, the column effects, the axial effects under the column. Those parts also you should uh, take care into consideration when you are evaluating the capacity of the structure. So keep on increasing the load, the red arrow, and see how the load deflection. If it is a linear portion, you don't need to worry, but non-linear, how to do that? That's what I'm going to talk in the next step. But here you have the codal provisions. So with the different performance limits, what is the rotations you are going to allow, uh, accept for the, say, for example, the columns. And similarly, you have the similar kind of table with the beams also based on the geometry, you know, your uh, uh, horizontal capacity and your axial capacity, then type of confinement, your allowables for different, uh, so uh, stress, you know, performance limits are defined. So that's how you say that the rotations based on that beams and columns, this in anyway, column I agree. So you can say that whether the, if it, it is within the rotations are within these limits, okay, this is the performance level of achieve. And uh, there also you can see that, right? And when you say as per the capacity spectrum and the demand spectrum interface, when you say that's one, that time you can calculate the, uh, your, what is the rotations, they are C within the limits or not, then you can say it is a, what you call uh, you know, life safety or collapse prevention, immediate occupancy or say a, what you call um, you know, operation. So this is the, how you discuss. I think, uh, I hope these points you get for even for beams are there, for walls are there, even certain cases, drift limits also you have to check in the different performance levels. Now continue the loading. Then after the hinge formation at the point, then you have to replace in the form of springs, you know, the rotation spring as well as the linear springs. Uh, in a sense, again, this becomes a non-linear characteristics, non-linear rotation spring, non-linear linear springs, and keep on increasing the load. Then you are going for the non-linear portion. And in this case, uh, you know, you have to say equilibrium possible, right? You have to check the equilibrium because you are stepwise, you are doing the linear the analysis because the, you are assuming at a given location, you have certain kind of stiffness, either second stiffness or the standard tangent stiffness that you, you are assuming and you are going to do the calculations for the load when it goes beyond the elastic load. That part is achieved by using the newton raphson method and ensure that there is equilibrium. And finally, for a given load step, what is the actual displacement rotations you evaluate and say that is converged and is in equilibrium and following the red path, the actual path of the element uh, uh, characteristics. So I hope these points are no need to discuss, but I just want to say what is the step involved. And this has to be taken care in order to evaluate uh, your, uh, say, uh, capacity of the structure. But one, th one thing you should be clear, uh, what I want to say that when you are developing this element characteristics, the element character's movement rotation, you should be very careful about generating it. If you say it depends upon size, you know, and type of the failure, uh, you know, mechanisms you are expected, shear, or the flexure, or the combination of this. Generally, you consider all the all the time the combination of it and try to evaluate the element character's movement rotation, character's beam and column, so that you are not going to make any much errors. So that's what I want to explain based on the whatever the test we have performed, it take both the effects in order to have the better capacity estimation of the structure. 
So this is the one you have total frame. When you come to the, say, for example, in the case of, uh, say, multi-story building, so how to do it? There's a similar kind of steps. I'm going to explain more details. So if you don't do properly, then I assume no, this particular capacity will be quite off. And uh, that is all depends upon the size effects, okay, type of the reinforcement. These things have to be properly considered and the type of failure mechanisms. So you have to take the, the combination always better so that that is also for us also took some time. Uh, when you initially calculated, we are over predicted. I think uh, I can show what is the curve we followed. But you know, that was definitely not good uh, compared to the whatever actual characteristics. After understanding, you can see the failures, right? The failures are very complex right, in this touch. I think you have seen the failures are very complex, right? See how the failures are. And there was also lots a lot of caution efforts, you see. See how the things are. And the joints are really performed very poor. See, it's not that in only element movement rotation characters, if you consider properly, you are going to pick up the see this joint is very important, so you cannot neglect the joint characteristics. If you don't assume that the joint is very rigid, you will get such kind of uh, you know higher capacity, and that's not realistic. So one should be very careful type of the failure. So that is based on the literature, whatever you, you have, and types of the reinforcement. Then you have to have the proper you know, failures and model that even see joint also you model it and get the proper characteristics that is capacity of the structure. That's what I want to tell. So this is the one we tested at Central Power Research Institute with the, you know, uh, you know, it is a tower testing facility. We also, instead of pushing, we pulled it. It's a similar for the static analysis. So we have the triangular variation of the loads, then you got the total wave reflections. Uh, I think a lot of people participate in the exercise. I hope some of you must have also remembered and participated in this exercise. So uh, what I wanted to say that, let us uh, again, you have the force keep on increasing. Then you have up to linear, not a problem. But when you go to the non-linear case, then you have to see proper, uh, you know, modeling of the replacing that uh, element with the sphinx. Okay. So again, we can take the shear effects also. The safety motion co beam characteristics. Then uh, you know we have the say first normal loads. You can calculate what is the deflections and uh, what is the uh, say your force transmitters transferred. After that, you know you can follow this assembly stiffness matrix, solve the static problem, then calculate uh, the load and the element based on the uh, deflections of the elements and the stiffness of the element. Check the state of stress is a linear, non-linear. The concrete cracks modify the moment of inertia as per the whatever the provisions we have. Go to the step two to the, do the repetition of calculation and sign for further step, taking the effective sizes are different when you have cracking is there. And solve for the load increment with say, again, small load step you can have. Repeat step uh, two to four till uh, your steel start yielding. After a steel start yielding, then you have to have the hinge formations. Then, you know, again, the same kind of procedures assembly is there. So then once you have the yielding, then you can see the tangent stiffness or second stiffness, both the methods and Newton Raphson technique can be used and see that every step we have a, you know, you are replacing these elements with the hinge characteristics, right? You have to calculate the hinge characters of the column, hinge characters of the say beam, even if you are modeling the joint, you have to calculate hinge characters of this one, replace with the sphinx, proper sphinx, non-linear sphinx, then that you uh, modify the your mesh, you are now the degree of freedom will be different than without the hinges. So modify the stiffness matrix and keep uh, you know modifying the you know properties of stiffness properties based on the equilibrium, based on the Newton's adaptation technique, and see that you are following this path of the element level as well as finally you are getting the blue curve as the moment uh, this is element characteristics right moment and rotation you see this blue curve is followed for a given applied load onto the structure and whatever the uh, transferred the force and moment you have to check with the linear non-linear and uh, using the neutral uh, absolute technique you can see the equilibrium so that's how we can proceed and uh, you know you can calculate uh, your say total capacity of the structure that is in terms of base shear versus the displacement and also, you can also do that. This, uh, you know, technique is very, uh, you know, very useful because many people must have hearing that you have the modal effects, right? So you apply as a triangular distribution of forces similar to the, you know, is called, uh, uh, what you call is a static analysis when you say is the only uh, significant mode we are considering as the first mode. But if you do this, you know, step by step, again, well solutions, I just explained with the static load keep on increasing and uh, keep, uh, you know, change, modifying the stiffness of the beam, uh, uh, hinge and column hinge and, uh, uh, you know, joint hinge. And you can do that, the complete nonlinear analysis using the support of the Newton-Raphson technique. That is static problem. 
but if you, you can you can take the same steps in the case of uh, you know uh, you can do the response spectrum every step you perform the response spectrum analysis and ensure that they are equilibrium and they are the load path is same as the element path uh, is there for element level and you do the iterations as iterative response spectrum so that your model effects are all taken care when you do the response spectrum every step uh, loading and ensuring the equilibrium with respect to element level and the structure level then you know all the mode cell effects are taken care so that is uh, definitely we are trying to say that they're doing very well and some validation also done with the experiment so try to follow the incremental response spectrum method ensuring the safety equilibrium at each incremental level of loading and response spectrum uh, performance you made so uh, again get the stiffness evaluate mass matrix generate so these are the steps right considering all the loads into con the consideration so you solve this problem step by step so you can take the modal effects also. now also see when you talk about the response spectrum uh, analysis even for the pushover analysis you also have to take uh, the multi-directional effects right if you push one direction you also have the some kind of a uh, 30 percent of the uh, lateral direction and you have another 30 percent of vertical direction so you have to keep those loads constant then you have to uh, you know apply the horizontal load keep on increasing don't uh, neglect those part if you neglect that then you are not taking the three directional effects you know okay so one should be you do the performance um, capacity spectrum in the all three directions particularly two direction of horizontal direction but take the effect of uh, the other load other side loads coming onto the elements of the structures component of the structure so that's what i try to show here uh, so you have the combination load so you apply the loads in 100 x direction when you are doing the push over analysis in the x direction remaining 30 percent you apply other direction so that you are taking the multi-direction effects in order to calculate the particularly the actual effects are going to be very important even bending effects so it's not that only one direction you could take capacity is not the true capacity you have to take the other direction effects also into the consideration while evaluating the capacity of the structure so these are the very important points uh, the performance based design when you are trying to do the uh, you know saying that you know dampers or anything is going to be working well to uh, reduce the response so you have to ensure that at what performance levels of the structure you are making the your damper recommendations or the uh, response control methods recommendations i think we are reaching up to say four uh, you know we have 350 so we have another say about uh, 10 about 15 minutes so we'll go to the part three i hope this part two I hope uh, all of you got at least the steps. So anyway, I sh I'm sharing all the detailed presentation, whatever I made to you. So you can go through that and uh, anything you wanted to interact later part also we can so interact. OK, I think let me have uh, any few questions on this. Second part is complete. I welcome uh, to have few questions. Anybody has few questions, please? Radhika, anybody has a question? Sir, in the, the uh, chat box, there is a uh... Mr. Sethu Madhav has uh, typed stress and strain and shear analysis. Ah, okay. What is that? Can you just, I am not getting, please, can you repeat? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, please, please, tell me. So, this is the, when you're calculating the movement rotation carries of the element, right? So, you have to take the uh, stress strain, actual stress strain carries of the, say, for example, concrete including the confinement effort you have the kenton path models right so that models are used to calculate the stress considering the stress and strain at different state of the loading i hope that is the point he is asking can you please repeat please who is the person can you hello Radhika? Sir, it is state mother yeah is that what is that so there's a question i answered is okay or what is that uh, can you please unmute and speak mr say the mother See when you are evaluating. So there is another question in the chat yeah. box. Difference between pushover and performance based design. Oh, pushover analysis only to evaluate the capacity of the structure. Okay. Now uh, you know. Okay, I think uh, I I hope the first person is satisfied the answer. I do not know, but you can write to me. Yeah. See, uh, you have the you see pushover. You see, like you know, pushover is only to get the capacity of the structure. So. For example, you have a single story structure, you have acceleration, you have mass into acceleration, you have the mass of the structure, you know the force, so force divided by mass, you will get acceleration. And you also have the top displacement, so you have the capacity spectrum. Okay, this is a capacity, spectrum, the capacity spectrum of this particular single story structure. 
but you have a demand you, know, you are able to see the demand now for a demand uh, now in this you can also mention you know if you say single story i'm just explaining for ease so you apply keep on increasing the load you will get the force versus displacement like this that force divided by mass you will get acceleration and you get the top displacement because similarly given now you can based on the you know you were i already given the table right uh, you know for different uh, you know uh, rotations for the column rotations allowed the uh, for the different uh, state of the performance level like in immediate occupancy life safety you have the rotations allowed right so you can fix based on this uh, allowables you can fix on the capacity spectrum what is the you know performance levels is a say it is operational immediate occupancy life safety or uh, you know collapse prevention you can mention based on the limits and the based on the corresponding rotations uh, and to the structure let's say particular beam and column whichever is uh, weaker one that is going to govern the location of this particular let's say performance levels so this is the capacity spectrum now is superpose the demand and capacity and say the interface is the so it is now in this say for example this step you have a your performance is in between the life safety and the uh, immediate occupants but that is uh, i cannot say that is the final one because because of this one you have energy dissipation if you take that into consideration that one may shift here you may go towards close to the immediate occupants so that is what the performance based design superposing the demand as well as capacity and the pushover is the only capacity curve that is load versus deflection that you convert into the say spectral acceleration spectral displacement then you get that capacity spectrum that capacity spectrum is superposed with the demand spectrum and we interface uh, after taking the energy dissipation will tell what is the performance level written because already you allowed the uh, you written already a performance levels of the spec structure and you have to do, uh, you know put the dem uh, demand on to that and see where is interfering it is between the io or ls or it is on io or it is o you can see based on the interaction of the intersection of the your uh, demand as well as performance uh, you know what is uh, you know what is that called capacity spectrum so this is just shown for explanation but this may go towards downside after taking the energy dissipation in the right side i hope uh, understood please hello capacity spectrum and the performance based design hello i hope uh, you must have understood maybe you can write uh, something else is there yes radhika any questions uh, no sir i think you can okay. proceed okay i hope uh, the person who are not clear still you can write to me it's not a problem so that is the end of uh, say second part let's move to the third part so we have about 15 minutes just one second so i'm now uh, you know I, I i also mentioned that you know satish kumar or maybe the shrikala they are going to talk about detailed time history analysis i'm uh, not very sure they are going to talk about the response spectrum how a procedure for the you know structure support you know connecting with the say dampers and uh, you know absorbers and isolators that part i am going to focus on this in this particular uh, you know part 3 response control of structure subject to the dynamic loads just one second please so again uh, this slide is very important uh, you know if you want to really work on the proper uh, way of uh, uh, using the the technology of uh, vibration control so here you can see in the say harmonic excitation you have a clear resonance right when the excitation frequency is coinciding with the say natural frequency of the structure you have a large response now also you can see this is very velocity sensitive reason in the velocity sensitive reason if you are able to increase the damping of the structure definitely you are going to have the reduction in the response you have to catch this point very well now if you go to the left side the structure is very stiff right the stiffness is very large so that's one way of uh, reducing the response that is very conventional method when you go to the right side if you make the frequency very small so very flexible so like for example base isolation so this is the zones you can you have to identify this is become the displacement sensitive and this is the acceleration sensitive or force sensitive now where you want to control most of the controls are either displacement sensitive or in the case of a velocity sensitive reason 
Sometimes you say velocity constant, displacement constant, acceleration constant with respect to the earthquake response spectrum is concerned. And same characteristics you also find in the case of earthquake excitation. You have a central portion, which is a velocity sensitive region. So if you are able to increase the damping, then you automatically your response keep on reducing. But, the, but again, I'll tell you here another important point. So everybody those wanted to work on say dampers to introduce infrastructure to reduce the increase the damping and reduce the responses. I suggest to see that these dampers should not change the free vibration characters of the structure significantly. Maybe five ten percent it will change something. It will increase because you are introducing certain kind of stiffness. But ensure that is not drastically changed. Uh, that's what your objective also. When you say it's not drastically changing, you have the more you are utilizing that particular uh, damper for better energy dissipation and is not influencing the stiffness of the structure, but except the energy dissipation. I think that is the better concept when you have somebody trying to design the dampers into the structure. That should not influence the natural characters of the structure. So you try to move vertically down. So suppose you have the, say, you know, you have a say 5% damping, that is last but one. You want to increase to 10%, so you have a response reduction. And if you draw the horizontal capacity of the structure horizontal line, you can decide what is the damping to be introduced into structure. Therefore, accordingly, you can have the design of the dampers. So that point keep in mind. Coming to the again in the case of say shock loads, again you have the TD by TN. TN is very large, means flexible one. You have the low responses in the structure. And in the say peak region, damping not so significant, but definitely in the peak region, dampers are going to be very helpful. But in the case of blast loads, its better concept is that your TN should be made as, as small as possible so that you have better effect on the control of the dynamic response. So this concept you should know very well. The reasons reasons of the response spectrum we you really have to put your structure so that you know you can have the better control. So same way here, say for example, if we talk about earthquake, now we are talking about the FTP on the earthquake in you know, uh, earthquake aspects. So let us talk about earthquake. So you have the say. Uh, this is a time period you have a large time period so you have low acceleration suppose you say peak uh, ground acceleration on minus to one if you draw the horizontal you have very very small acceleration but you have the large displacement in the central portion where you have the damping effects so anyway this is drawn only one damping in the case of is 18 and 3 but the side dependent spectrum you are drawn for different damping so at uh, different dampings with draw vertical lines if you increase the damping your response acceleration keep reducing so that is all that that kind of concepts you will make you suppose even if you have a structure you know standard design you make for the zone three for example seismic design you want to you see that that structure is uh, has to be just to, you know you have to without changing the designs and all you want to construct in zone four or zone five except you know soil you have to take into consideration only you have to put introduce the say because say point one six uh, you know maximum constraint rate has gone to say point three six in the case of zone five if you want to build the same structure. So the difference of uh, almost say two times that it can be you can just see that by increasing a damping you should be able to make the structure even though designed for zone three you'll be able to qualify with the increase in the damping of the structure that's a concept you should catch when you want to use the dampers so this is the various uh, design method conventional methods where the, you resist the load by increasing the sizes so and again i want to say that you are increasing the sizes uh, just because of the accident loads uh, and the size is going to be is there permanent you know that load is going to be the very may happen may not happen so therefore the size is just increasing as a conventional method and trying to make the safe for the low probable uh, accidental loads is not a good concept because when you increase the size of the structure you know you are going to lose the ductility right when you have a huge sizes you know what happens it's going to be shear failure so you lose the ductility and you are you know as usual general a uh, thumb rule is that you put the more thicknesses you have a poor light right in many aspects you take creep and shrinkage or you can uh, you know you can say different you know many things are going to be uh, different when you put the more sizes and failure modes are shear failure modes so many things are going to happen when you have the size of increasing that size increase is required only for the accent loads may happen may not happen please keep that in mind so therefore this uh, you know new technology like base isolation and dampers have become very popular and now country is picking up to use this technology to have a better safe designs uh, under earthquake loads which are going to be very pro low probable and may happen may not uh, happen and ensuring the safety uh, even in that case without putting the more economy more cost onto the structures and the even durability also it indirectly going to help 
if you have that kind of concepts compared to the conventional concepts. So in the control methods, you have a uh, dampers, you have a, you know, isolators, you have a liquid dampers, you have the yielding type of dampers, and you have the friction type of dampers, many are there, and you can have the combination of it. That is a passive kind of devices. So in the convention, you can have the bracing, you put the extra walls, it's uh, thicknesses, uh, size of the columns you have, but in the case of, uh, you, know, convent, you know, control methods, you have, can move the structure into the, say, displacement sensitive or increase the damping of the structure. That's how we control the response. So this concept, you know, from the Bujja Creek onwards, people are now working very seriously and the base isolation has become slowly, slowly very popular in the country. The, the hospital, Almost 170 people died in the Bhuja hospital, including the doctors. That time, the prime minister visited that area and asked for the hospital should not get disturbed with the earthquakes. So that word made uh, many people to work along with the New Zealand and made within his term the hospital on the base isolators. So this hospital now on the basis of first structure maybe of in the country. And same time, parallelly, we also had an experimental building at IIT Kohati on the base isolator as experimental building. So uh, there's a lot of history behind this building to talk, but uh, we should not, uh, you know, time is very short, so no need to worry about it. Just one second, please. Just one second, I'm sorry. I don't know. Hello, call me later. I have lecture, please. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, sorry. Uh, you know, I was expecting nobody will disturb. I mentioned to many people, but anyway, it happened. So this is another place where you have the seven buildings in the country. You know, in the Delhi, they use the friction dampers where you can see the uh, actual load reduction in the columns are significant with without friction dampers. So they call Paul friction. Again, there's a lot of story behind it, how they could implement there. And we also done a lot of tests on the piping system and structures with the friction dampers. You can see the a lot of reduction in the red portion is without uh, friction dampers, whereas the blue portion is with the dampers. So the uh, lines and dark points is the uh, test with the, with the friction damp. And the red one is uh, theoretical calculate without damper. And the blue one is uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know theoretical calculations with the friction damp. So we can match, we are able to match with the, say, whatever the test results are shown. So that's how the, you know, what is the uh, damping values, what happens to the damping values the different excitations because your input energy increases relatively there is damping increase but still you know you have the reduction in the responses but at lower damping you have a damping ratio is large the lower excitation so this uh, a lot of experiments and a lot of uh, you know observations uh, shows that it is very beneficial to use the safe friction damp. another important buildings is the uh, you know emergency control centers a response center in uh, fukushima in the Fukushima, this was the building built just two to three years before the actual accident took place. And this is the only building on isolator, which helped uh, to manage whole disaster. Okay, now when you want to manage the disaster, you know what are the activities very well. So to do perform all the activities, only this building is very safe. And uh, even say, uh, you have the crack free, everything fine, therefore they could, because outside you have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, radiation effects and all so on, right? So this is the uh, definitely very helpful and how this base isolation becoming popular and popular as a time pass. And the one should be remembering that you have a, is a, any building and not necessarily that one type of isolator is, you have the different types of lead bearings and uh, uh, laminate rubber bearing combinations all possible based on the wind effects as well as earthquake. So you have the block diagrams for the say passive uh, uh, you know, control, then uh, semi-active control and the active control. But structures generally is not except the aeroplane and are very critical structures. You can think about uh, active systems, particularly if you have a load continuously acting on the structure dynamic load. Yes, you should think about the active loads, active control. But for the structures like this kind of accidental loads, you can have the say active passive or semi-active, where the semi-active requires less power supply. The you know just I'll just explain the concepts of the semi-active. That for example, you have friction damper. You supply the more uh, uh, some kind of uh, compression variation with the demand uh, based so that you have the energy dissipation very large because your sliding friction increases because you are putting the normal force increasing so that is the how the passive control kind of things is going to be there even it is failed but still you have the passive effects uh, uh, without any semi-active effects they are simple to explain with the semi-active devices so if you see the mathematical equation equilibrium equation you have extra term because of the energy dissipating term 
we have the uh, in inertia part, uh, structural damping part, the potential part, and the total energy applied. When you have the extra energy part because of the dampers, obviously the rest of the three terms has to reduce uh, if you want to make the equilibrium with the external energy supply. So this is the energy dissipating cap, non-linear caps of the stiffness and the displacement. Then you get the energy area under that cow, whatever the stress is I tried to show earlier. So that's simple reason to understand that because you have some extra component which can take the energy and therefore the demand onto the structure will reduce. So some tests, a lot of tests done on isolators in the experimental models. And then you can see that, you know, under the uh, given earthquake motion, there's no amplification, more or less base excitation maintained. Whereas in the conventional one, you can keep on increasing the acceleration levels, depends upon the structure and its time. This is the experimental building parallelly made with the bridge. So we have made uh, two experimental buildings with the instruments at IIT Gohati. I think you also, most of the people must have seen these buildings. That was a good initiative and we have learned a lot of things on the structure side structure interaction side structure interaction and how the isolator is going to be uh, effective in the reducing the responses because of the actual earthquakes and also how to replace if you have any problem in the isolator this whole technology has been developed and i hope uh, that kind of knowledge is now people are using in the design of isolator so the red one though it is small values because of the long distance uh, earthquake but if you see the same scale you can see the isolated building has a very very small acceleration and they are more or less constant throughout the height of the building and you can see the how the this particular uh, conceptual isolated building you can see that internal parts are the equipment piping whatever in internal is there they are not going to get disturbed because of the say isolator but whereas in the conventional design they are going to be toppled and a lot of issues are there in the building inside the building itself so then we also tested uh, you know the composite structure is steel plus the concrete on the we have a, a largest shake table in the country is 100 ton shake table in uh, I, you know we have the indira gandhi center for fk you know Indra, in ig car indira gandhi center for atomic research so there we have uh, tested recently just before i came out of the uh, you know bhava atomic center I, I completed that test and then i my you know 60 years life <laughs> reached therefore <laughs> you know what is services so then uh, you know we had a lot of data available and uh, a lot of lessons from this test also you can see how this you, know, you can see the isolator how it moves at the foot of the you know, stretch you know it is the same concept so you don't do much amplifications in the same thing so we have a two three structure tested on isolators then uh, actual buildings are tested on isolator you have a large data in the country for uh, any validation if uh, anybody wanted to uh, make such kind of designs yeah so this is another you know i think many people must have seen even if uh, these technologies are quite used as i mentioned that even if you design the structure for the zone three you can have the same structure can satisfy the seismic requirements uh, by using the dampers isolators uh, as i mentioned there right? same way is also the same concepts can be used even for the say retrofitting of structures so this is without yeah without disturbing the without disturbing the you know the functional functions of the structure people able to replace uh, the columns uh, you know put the isolators below the existing columns by cutting the things and uh, giving the temporary supports and putting the isolators so this technology also we established here the same buildings we have lifted with the say isolators and we have lifted whole building and put the variation of the different type of isolators so we have uh, lifted with the jocks and put the initially we had a laminate lead plug bearing then later on we put the laminated rubber bearing to see the uh, effect of these uh, types of the isolators on this building so we could do that so whole technology i think people find that very difficult to do that is not very difficult we can easily do the proper maintenance yes yeah. this we could do uh, yeah that's just right so we could do that the technology is available in the country so in wait wait so the steps are all already given right just just now we are seeing we put the temporary supports cut it then you have the free then put the isolator and see that they are anchored out So this is for the existing buildings, and the, for new buildings is not an issue at all. So even for bridges, you can do the same thing. And uh, you know, you have various type of isolators. You have a laminated rubber bearing. You have the load deflection is linear. Then you have high damping. You have the instatic carrots because high damping rubbers if you use. But still, the you know effective stiffness is very small to have the time periods. Generally, time period target is about two seconds. 
of the structure on base isolation. Now we have lead plug, we have initial portion for the say structures. Uh, because I said that when you put the say a structure isolated, the time period is about two seconds, therefore, they are very prone to the say wind loads because the wind load excitations of this similar kind of frequencies. To take care of that, you have the lead for the initial uh, low amplitude of excitation forces because the wind, this will have the high stiffness compared to the actual stiffness which is required for the earthquake load. That is the advantage of lead plug bearing. So therefore, laminated uh, bearing and uh, lead plug bearings combinations are generally used in order to take the wind as well as low uh, frequency uh, normal excitations in, uh, and earthquake excitations also. So, uh, and you have pendulum type uh, in oscillator, you know, say isolators. Again, you have a recent capability. They are very good. And, uh, you know, you can also try, it. some people have tried in the world to use this isolator also. And if you want to control the displacement, you can have the, uh, you know, you have the uh, uh, isolator plus the damper so that you have hybrid isolation system for controlling the displacement. Because displacement is also very important to control because the structure is alone is not going to stand because you have a lot of services. If you have industry structures, a lot of piping, a lot of cables, many things going there. Even in the case of the normal, uh, say, hospitals and all, you are going to get the you know, pipe, uh, water through the pipeline system. So you have a lot of dis differential displacement that has to be taken care. Therefore, displacement control is very important for the structures in the isolators. So this is a natural base isolation. We have done a lot of experiments on that. You can see when the excitation keep on increasing, you are shifting the frequency, your uh, time period keep on elongating. Therefore, your isolation effect are uh, achieved. So that is advantage of the natural base isolation. Based on the demand, your elongation is happening automatically. Therefore, your accelerations keep reducing. That's what you could see here. So one can understand there are some uh, PhD thesis and a lot of publication on this also. But this simple concepts, if you make in the structure, definitely your margins in for seismic loads are dynamic loads very high. So the isolators, you have the components, the superstructure, then you have isolation system, then foundation and soil. So this isolator is generally good for the rocky kind of hard kind of strata compared to the soft soil. Because if you have soft soil, anyway, you have the long time period of the structures. That is the basic, uh, say, concepts of the isolators. So I'm sorry, just one second. So. Now, it's a simple design. It's not very complex design. See, you have a single story structure. So you generally say, the, you know, uh, what is that called? 50% uh, <clears throat> of uh, shear model, strain shear modulus you consider for the design point of view. Say this is allowable stress 3.53. The load is calculated about 24 ton, 24 divided by the stress. You'll get the area required for the rubber. Now, once you know the area, if you take circular, you can get what is the diameter of the isolate. Once you have the target frequent uh, period is two seconds, then you can get what is the effective rubber thickness. Now, in order to have the local buckling of the, if you take the local total rubber, the effective stiffness of vertical diagonal reduces because of bulging action of the rubber. Therefore, you put the steel plates of the same, about 1.5, generally is recommended 1.5 mm to 2 or 3 mm. You put that layers, okay? So you can find out what is the effective thickness of the rubber. Then you have accordingly, you can calculate to avoid the buckling. Then you can put the number of shims so that the local buckling of the rubber not happening, you get the very high stiffness, good stiffness in the vertical direction. You are, generally, it is expected. 10 hertz also is like, uh, generally is achieved in the case of vertical direction in the base isolator case because of this kind of designs. So that's all. Very simple, right? Of course, you have to check the buckling effects and all kinds of design checks are there. But otherwise, the conceptual design is very easy to make the isolator design. I hope uh, it will start and make you motivate to design the isolators very easy. My book has a very detailed design for various, uh, various types of isolators. And uh, what are checks you have to make, uh, everything is uh, very nicely explained. So analysis, uh, if you have the lead plug bearing, you have to use this kind of uh, nonlinear elements. Still, we assume that the structure is uh, elastic. And I say, if you want to see the performance, you have to take the, you know, do the performance-based design for the, let's say, whatever the design-based earthquake is there, and ensure that these are within the, say, whatever the joints capability are there, that performance level you can decide. As for the codes, you have rotations, you know, drifts. In addition to that drifts, what is the performance uh, capacity based on the, the hinge, the, you know, uh, interface connection capacity, you have to define one performance levels in the structure. Therefore, you will ensure that the connectivity is there and hence uh, the effect of the isolator is achieved. So that is the point I want to make uh, here very clear. So dampers, again, the same concepts in, I tried to explain. So we have the lead action dampers because of the lead is a very soft one. So when you start the bulge start moving uh, uh, horizontally oscillating in the you know, lead, 
the lid will flow uh, either side. You have some kind of static characters like this. And the friction damper, you have this, you know, uh, uh, Coulomb characters of the load of uh, sliding force versus deflection like this. So you have various dampers I mentioned, right? So all have the super similar characteristics, even SMA, for example, state memory alloy, which is, uh, uh, again, we are using the pseudo effects, not the, uh, you know, memory effects to have the more energy dissipation and recentering capabilities. Uh, uh, that's what it's, he's here mentioned here. So you have the, you know, I think concepts are basically the hysteric characteristics to dissipate the energy. I think when you are hurry, then uh, the things will be slow. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so I tried to explain earlier. So you have the, the simple design procedure, so I'm explain. Even my book open, you have all this. Uh, this is the strength of metal up close, you can have the better design. A lot of case studies where uh, we try to do the existing structures with the uh, retrofitting with the dampers. Uh, but sometimes uh, only dampers may not help the combination of conventional method like uh, bracings and jocketing, plus the dampers may work better. So we have done the test and proved uh, various uh, methods also, time history analysis and even say absorbers. So we have tested with the tuned liquid dampers and also we have developed a new damp new absorber with uh, you know permanent magnet which has a you have the ferro fluids and you put the ferro, uh, permanent magnet with the different uh, uh, you know capacities you have the mode reduction in the response so it is some kind of semi active devices where you have the magnet is placed and the uh, you know the <coughs> what is that uh, equivalent viscosity changes with this characteristic therefore you have more energy dissipation a lot of test and proof is there uh, proved by the methodology is uh, validated. Then, you know, we have the approved, you know, try to have a session for retrofitting our existing structure with the liquid dampers. Now, design, now, say, for example, friction damper, if you start uh, designing for this simple frame, it's a very simple concept I'm trying to explain. You have a stiffness 4EA over L cube, assume the slab is rigid, but you can, as it is also, you can consider you have frequency 3. The response acceleration of this structure when you put in the zone 3 is of 0.45 G. Corresponding displacement you have evaluated here. Then once you know the displacement force, you can calculate the energy dissipation. That will result into the 23.4% damping. Therefore, your acceleration has reduced 0.25 from 0.45. Therefore, your demand on the structure reduces. And uh, that's how we can say this should be within the limits of acceptable limits of the beams and columns. So very simple, right? It's not very complex at all. So the same simple concepts we have uh, tried to put in the kind of uh, uh, you know procedure of iterative response spectrum to get the response of the structure with the dampers because structure is in the elastic condition that's what we have done so now based on the uh, you know what is the performance like a, a immediate occupancy or the operation you know what is that called uh, operation limit operation limits doesn't matter this procedure straight away works if you have the operation limit then you can say that there is a some amount of energy you have to add the component of energy dissipation of the structure plus the energy dissipation of the equipment and that keep modifying your uh, in the change whatever the test we perform the structural frequency is not going to change much if you say operation limits therefore you can assume still the energy dissipation of the uh, structure energy dissipation of the damper keep on add, adding so first iteration calculate the response spectrum analysis calculate the damping go back and evaluate the response go to this difference in the displacements or the responses in the successive iterations are same or not if not then change the damping values again keep on repeating till you say that uh, the uh, in the you know uh, what is that called successive iterations your response are within the say one percent or two percent then you say the converge values and finally you can fix that is the response of the structure so it's a very simple steps one can follow this technology also verified with the test uh, you know this all tests are validated test data is validated with that procedure and we try to do that same procedure and we also uh, made uh, some structures with the elastoplastic dampers and uh, some equipment with the friction dampers so you can see the elastoplastic damper is all retrofitted uh, with that kind of concepts so this is ends uh, you know though i've taken 10 minutes extra this is my third lecture ends so anybody wanted to have any questions you are welcome thank you very much for patient hearing any questions please hello so there is a question in the chat box yeah Maximum permissible horizontal displacement in an isolator. Pardon? Maximum permissible horizontal displacement in an isolator. Maximum displacement? Permissible horizontal displacement in an isolator. In actuator? In an isolator. 
yeah that is you know see what happens uh, you know the strain levels you can go even 200 percent so you know design basis generally we say 50 percent level of uh, strains and you know, say for example we have seen you know, that about 50 percent strain level you can allow the displacements in the design i shown right hello yes sir yeah yeah so corresponding the 50 percent strain in the rubber you can calculate based on the geometry what is the displacement that is allowable displacements I hope uh, I, I could. Uh, I, I hope the person got the answer. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. okay sir. Any more questions, please? Participants Hello? can unmute themselves and ask the questions. Or, chat, or uh, please type in the chat box also. Pardon? Actually, there is a lot of disturbance because of rain. Uh, please, can you repeat? Hello. Sir. Uh, 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 I asked the participants to share any questions in the chat box or they uh -huh. can unmute and share the question. There are no questions or any questions? So there are no questions uh, in okay. the chat box right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anything else, please? Radhika? Uh, uh, thank you, sir. So uh, it was a very exhaustive session uh, covering all the basics, uh, right from the basics of structural dynamics to the design of uh, performance based design. And then finally, moving on to response structure, response of uh, uh, isolators. It was a very exhaustive session. Thank you very much for sharing your vast experience with us. Sir. And uh, it was an enriching experience for all of us. And I'm sure it has benefited the participants. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the Department of Civil Engineering and all the participants, I would like to extend our extreme uh, gratitude towards you. Thank you very much, sir. So thanks a lot for giving the opportunity to speak to all of you. I wish you all best best of luck. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Uh, I'll leave. No, it's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Sir. Thank you. Thank sir. you all, and good luck, all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. And the, uh, the notes is with you, so we can share with the people. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think still a good number of people. That's nice. <laughs>